Good evening. My name is Francis Ma, and I'm a product manager in the developers product group. There are many ingredients in building a successful app, and one of these is having a great design. Design shapes your user's experiences and motions when using your app. And having a great design not only helps them utilize and navigate through your app, but it also helps them, or it also delights them and provides a great experience across different platforms and form factors. Now, these were some of the things that we want as well from our own apps from Google. And so we've created material design. Material design is a design system that governs interaction, visual, and motion design principles. And that means it guides how your app should look, feel, move, and adapt across different platforms, providing a consistent experience. There are four principles to building material design app. First is about tangible services where your interaction cues are based on how physical objects work in the real world. Second is about print-like design, where your content and colors are bold, graphic, and intentional. that are refined to fit the look and feel of your brand. Third is about using meaningful motion to draw the user's attention and to provide a sense of continuity as they move from one screen to the next. And fourth is about an adaptive design that can scale and have a consistent look and feel across different form factors, whether you're building for a phone, a tablet, or even for a TV. And for your users, that also means that they don't have to relearn your app as they switch from devices. And through these four principles, material design helps you express your brand through the use of these bold graphic colors. It also helps you delight your users with motion and a sense of consistency across different platforms. And most importantly, it helps you increase user engagement and drive growth, as we've seen from many examples of apps who've switched to using material design. Here is a before and after of Snapdeal after going through material design. And there are many great examples we've seen from different developers that have seen great success by going material design. For example, Trello is an app that lets you organize things by creating boards. And by going material design, they've seen an increase in user interaction and engagement. Another example is Pocket Cast, a great podcast app that has seen an increase in sales after going material design. And those are just some of the examples and we have many more that we have seen since the past year and a half in introducing material design. There are over hundreds of thousands of apps that have updated their design. And you can see some of these great examples at g.co slash material showcase. And in addition, we've been working hard to help you implement material design with resources available on design.google.com. From there, you'll find things like the latest design specs, an icon assets library that you can just take and, grab and put them in your app. Also, a devices tool that provides the latest device specs and metrics for things like screen densities and sizes of the most popular devices. And for those of you who are into interactive learning, we have a Udacity course on material design as well. And of course, for all the developers in the room, most importantly is implementing this in code. And that's where we have the Android support library with reusable UI components that you can just drop in. And with using the support library, it also means that your app will work on older versions of Android. So be sure to check out design.google.com and learn more about material design. So going beyond design, I also want to share with you some of the tools and services that can help you develop your app, grow and engage an audience, and earn more money. Let's start with develop. These are tools and services to help you build your app easier, faster, and better. Android Studio. We've introduced Android Studio 2.0 just a few weeks ago. And this is a massive update from the version 1.0 that we've made a year ago. 
Specifically, we've worked really hard to improve the speed and productivity of using Android Studio. We've taken your feedback on this. One of the notable features is Instant Run. Instant Run lets you take code and deploy that into a running app, whether it's a connected physical device or an emulator. Here is an example of what Instant Run looks like. As you make changes, you can, make, you can see that reflected in your running app in just seconds. So this is a great way to really refine and iterate your design and UI, and to do that in a very productive manner. In addition to having instant run, we've also worked hard to improve the end-to-end -end full build and deploy cycle. It used to take a minute. Now it takes only 20 seconds. Another great feature that we've been working on is revamping our emulator. Again, we've heard your feedback on the emulator, and we've been working hard to make this much faster than before. With this new emulator, it now runs faster than most physical Android devices. And we've also improved the UI to make it easier for you to emulate things like device locations, or to do things like device orientation, and even emulating phone calls. Another great addition to Android Studio 2.0 is a new GPU profiler. Now, for those of you who are building graphics-intensive app, like games, performance is critical. And oftentimes, debugging your graphics code is very time-consuming. And so with this new GPU profiler and debugger, it records your entire GPU stream and lets you play that back, saving you countless hours of debugging. It's a great thing to check out. And since Android Studio is built on top of IntelliJ, their advancements and enhancements propels us even faster. And with the latest version of Android Studio, we've updated to the IntelliJ 15, which was just released several weeks ago as well. And through this update, you'll see improvements on usability and testing. So there are lots of great features with Android Studio 2.0 updates. And for those rare developers in this room who may be still on our old deprecated Eclipse tool, now is a really good time to check out Android Studio. This is all available through our Canary channel today. In addition to providing tools, we also have cloud services to help you build your app easier. Firebase is a mobile backend as a service that provides a real-time database that lets you easily store data and also synchronizes across device in real time. Also, it includes offline handling automatically. Another great feature with Firebase is user authentication, which lets you integrate things like Google sign-in, Facebook login, or your own custom email and password login so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel of creating your own user authentication. Another great feature is static hosting, which is CDN-backed and SSL-enabled static hosting that lets you quickly spin up a mobile web page or even surf your image assets. Through Firebase, Google provides this infrastructure so that you don't have to worry about that or the scaling, and you can really focus on building differentiated features for your app. In addition to helping you build easier and faster, we also have tools to help you build better. And this is where Cloud Test Lab comes in. We know that over 44%, we know that 44 of bugs are discovered by users after an app is launched. And that 84% of users would just abandon the app after experiencing an error for the second time. So ensuring your app is of high quality before it's released is very important. And with Cloud Test Lab, we help you run automated and custom tests through virtual or physical devices that are hosted in the Google data centers. We provide access to the most popular Android devices and also let you run these tests in parallel. So you can test things in different languages, device orientation, or even in different Android versions, all in parallel. And doing this is very easy. All you have to do is upload your APK, and with our robo-tests, that means even if you have not written any test case, we automatically crawl through the app and capture screenshots, videos, and crash logs for you. And we also worked hard to integrate this into your, product, your development workflow 
and made it accessible through Google Play and Android Studio. So when you publish an app through the alpha or beta channel of Google Play, we will automatically run your APK through the Cloud Test Lab to help you catch those errors early before it gets broadly distributed. This feature is now in beta, and we're continuing our rollout in the coming months. So I've talked about some tools that help you develop your app. Let's switch gears to talk about ways to help you grow and engage your audience. For those of you who are building for the mobile web, we've heard your feedback and the challenges you face in re-engaging your users. So we've been working hard to extend the Chrome platform to bring native-like capabilities to help you drive re-engagement with things like push notifications, even if the browser is closed, the ability to add your app to the home screen as if it was installed, and let users quickly reaccess that from their home screen. And also, ability to work offline and 2G support with service workers. Flipkart is a great example of, of, of a company that has taken advantage of some of these capabilities and created Flip, Flip, Flipkart Lite. We're going to have another session later on today to go more in depth and talk about these features. So be sure to stay tuned to that. Another great example of re-engagement is using push notifications. And this is where Google Cloud Messaging comes in. Google Cloud Messaging lets you send messages from the cloud over to your devices. And we've seen incredible traction of developers using this. Today, there are over 150 billion messages that are processed each day through Google Cloud Messaging. And there are over 750,000 apps using it. We're working really hard to continue to improve the scalability of this so that you don't have to worry about Google Cloud managing your own infrastructure. And, and over the past months, we've expanded the capabilities of Google Cloud Messaging to not only work on Android, but also work on Chrome and iOS. And we've introduced a feature called Topic Messaging, which lets you subscribe multiple devices to a specific topic and send a message specifically targeting to those devices. For example, if you're building a news app, you can send a notification only to users that are interested in sports and not in finance. Google handles this fan out for you and the scaling for you so you don't have to. Using Google Cloud Messaging is free, and starting today with topic messaging, we've also made this unlimited. Another great way to drive re-engagement is by making your content available through Google Search, and this is where app indexing comes in. App indexing lets you index your native app content and make that discoverable through Google Search. We see over 100 billion queries per day in Google Search, so this is a really great way to get in front of the users and drive re-engagement of your app. So in addition to your organic campaigns to drive re-engagement, Another great way to expand your reach is by using Google AdWords. With universal app campaigns through Google AdWords, we help you reach users across Google Search, YouTube, the Google Display Network, and Google Play. Setting this up is very easy. You just have to create one campaign, specify your budget, the amount you want to pay to drive and install, and we would automatically handle this for you to reach the most relevant users across all of these channels. So I've talked about some tools that can help you develop your app, services that can help you grow your audience. So now let's switch gears to talk about earning more money. Now, many of you are building apps not just for fun, and it's important to be able to earn money and grow a successful business. One of these ways to do that is by using display ads through AdMob. There are over 650,000 apps integrated with AdMob today, and we've seen incredible traction here from Indian developers using AdMob with over 100,000 apps integrated. We've been working hard to make, this platform con to make this platform smarter and the ability to provide a more customized and tailored experience for your users. For example, for folks who, are in, who, who may have in-app purchases, we help you figure out which ones are likely buyers and be able to tailor the experience to the buyers. So an example of that is through the in-app purchase house ads. So when you offer in-app purchase, some users may decide to buy and some of them may not. 
AdMob would automatically figure out which ones of these are likely buyers and only show, and show these buyers your in-app purchase offers so that you can continue to monetize and keep them retained in your app while for the rest of the users, you can monetize through display ads. Another example of AdMob is mediation, which means you can run ads across multiple ad networks through AdMob without having to manage the complexities of these multiple networks or having to integrate multiple SDKs in your app. And we also have an ad network optimization features, which we would check in real time from all of these ad networks, which of those is the highest paying every ad request. And we only then show the highest paying one in your app to help you maximize your earnings. We're also investing heavily into providing ad formats that, that, that provide great experiences on mobile with things like native ads that can be integrated into your app experience or lightbox ads that are interactive or video ads where users only need to watch the videos if they choose to. Beyond ads, another great way to monetize is through in-app purchases. Now we've heard the feedback in wanting to have more flexible pricing options, especially to tailor that for more of the local user needs. And so a few months ago, we've introduced the ability to lower your price points on Google Play and make your app or your in-app content for as low as 10 rupees. We've also been working hard to expand additional payment options with prepaid vouchers and gift cards. These are available in over 500 retail stores across 22 cities in India. And they're also available on e-commerce sites like Snapdeal and Amazon. And they can also be purchased with cash on delivery. So we're super excited about the opportunity in working with all of you to provide tools and products that can help you develop great apps grow and engage your user base, and to help you earn more money. You can check out the things that I've just talked about at developers.google.com. And now, I'd like to introduce Kanal to talk about building for the Indian market. Thank you.